Hi, this is Steve Lee Andrews, Outlaw Bookseller, um, and today we're back with Reading List Rock. We've done a lot of rock and roll recently. It's just one of those things. That's the way the cookie seems to be crumbling, as they say. Um, today we're going to do an unboxing of um, one of my favourite albums from the early 80s, um, and it's going to be the vinyl edition, the new vinyl edition, released um, on the 29th of October by John Fox of The Garden. This is the Deluxe Ed Cell Double CD, which is from about 12 years ago, I think. Um, and my original vinyl copy of The Garden went west a long time ago. Like quite a lot of people, I foolishly got rid of lots of my vinyl in the late 80s, early 90s as I went out the CD. It was mostly due to space, um, because space is always an issue if you live in a small house, a small flat. And um, so I'm delighted today to be able to get the garden again. And um, Postman Sean has just been. Thanks, Sean. He's a big Iggy Pop fan. He likes all the great music. Um, and he's just brought me this marvellous parcel from Thames End Music. So I'm going to unclip that a bit now. Um, John Fox is an important artist for me. Um, I love the original Ultravox albums. I've got more or less all of his solo material, which of course he's done a huge amount of. I've seen him in concert many, many times. Um, and I actually know him slightly because um, John comes into the bookshop where I work and has been doing so for several years because he lives in Bath these days. And it was funny, the first time I saw him in Bath was in the street. And of course, you know, he has the theory about being the quiet man and dressing in the grey suit so nobody can recognise him. But I clocked him straight away, but I guess maybe that's just me being a fan. Oh, hang on. We'll stop with the anecdote. And there it is. What an absolute beauty. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And oh, it's in a gatefold. I wasn't expecting that. Right, we might have to re, um, rethink our curating plans then. So let me just get this cardboard out of the way. So as I say, I know John vaguely because he comes in the shop. He's a customer. One of the best things about working in book selling is that you get regular customers who really love books and you get talking to them and you develop a relationship with them. And um, I actually saw John yesterday, which was the day the album was released. Um, and um, he came in and he um, he was buying an art book um, by Sue Rowe about um, Montmartre in Paris um, in the early part of the century when people like Picasso were hanging out there. And <clears throat> it's a book I've read as well. And he was saying how, you know, you buy you buy these books yourself, you, you lend them to people and you never get them back. So it's about his third copy. And... Um, I hadn't seen him for a while because, um, you know, the pandemic and stuff, things have been a bit more constrained and I work part time. And of course, he's often busy recording and what have you. And I did say to him, you know, how are things? And he said he, he was fine and that he'd just been finished recording a piano album um, and it had gone well, but he was too close to it and um, he couldn't hear it anymore. So he was going to leave it for a week and go back to it. So that's quite exciting news. Uh, a piano based album um, again from uh, from John because he, he does sort of keep working and amazing output I mean this um, you know he's he's not a really young man anymore and um, he still looks fantastic um, and he's always lovely to talk to such a pleasant guy and he said he was going to take a weekend out and he was going to go and see Robin Simon um, <clears throat> the guitarist from Systems Romance the third Ultravox album from the maths and of course Robin features prominently on The Garden and um, I'm just pausing a moment because the original version had a gloss on it. This is matte, but it's very, very nice and uh, lovely gatefold. Now, I seem to remember that my version had this picture of John looking very Italianate um, on the inner sleeve inside. So let's just have a look. Um, oh, yeah, this is a different inner sleeve um, to what we're used to. So certainly what I was used to. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to pop quick, have a quick look at the vinyl. So yeah, John was saying that he was going to go and see Robin. And um, and whenever he mentions Robin to me, he's always incredibly enthusiastic about Robin because of his left field approach to guitar and how you can never predict what he's going to do. There we are. Lovely transparent emerald green vinyl. Absolutely beautiful. There's a yellow variant as well. I decided to go with green because garden, it seemed right to me. I'm going to pop that into Polyline Dinner, courtesy of Covers 33, who by now who should be paying me advertising revenue. I always mention them, but I always use their stuff. And so we've got the inner and the LP, and I'm going to pop them back into the album. <clears throat> so yeah, and you know, whenever he talks about 
Robin. There's always this sort of spark of delight in his face and he says how wonderful, you know, Robin's left field sort of approach is. And, um, and you can tell there's a genuine sort of musical and, and friendly kinship there. And as I say, John is always really, really nice to talk to him. So yes, there's a new piano album coming. He's taking a step back from it and um, he's, um, he's sort of in touch with Robin, which is great. So he's managed to work through the pandemic, which is marvellous. So turning back to the garden, of course, it felt like um, an interesting step at the time. It felt like a sideways step because, of course, it's very similar sounding for some of the time to Sisters Romance, the third Ultravox album, which does tend to be the preferred one amongst the hardcore fan base. I'm a great apologist for the first album. I love all three of them. I think they're all fantastic records. Um, but this one does seem to have a very special place in the heart of the hardcore fans. And John himself was obviously very pleased with it. Loved working with Robin. And then, of course, he went off and did um, his solo thing in Metamatic. Um, and Robin then joined Magazine briefly, and sadly he only contributed brilliantly to the studio album Play. But um, And there was a lack of basis for collaboration, I think was what Magazine said officially, and which is a shame because it struck me that he was sort of the ideal person really, because he was one of the great punk, post-punk new wave guitarists who were really original. We had a great number of them then in those days. So yeah, so this seemed like unfinished business to me at the time. It felt like a return to that open pastoral keening synth sound of um, Systems Romance. And of course, there's a track on here called Systems Romance. And I was playing the CD this morning. And, you know, I, I love this album because I love anything with a Euro Eurocentric, Euromantic flavour. And, you know, it's also kind of psychedelia going on with John's work as well, which I like. Like, for example, in Systems Romance, there's the lyrics of. Um, when he says Lakeland in silver blazing away behind you and you just get this image of still photographs um, reproduced on top of each other in an endless sequence um, sort of prismatic and shining and the wonderful synth on that which is sort of there's a heavy echo on it like there is on the vocals and of course it's um, this good old sawtooth wave which is pure and clean and just sounds amazing so you know, a great, great record. And Europe After the Rain was the hit at the time, of course. And I do listen to this on my headphones when I go to Italy, because um, I find it very, very conducive indeed to Italianate strolling, as are, you know, this, the golden section, and, um, you know, a lot of John's early work. Um, it's just in mysterious ways as well. They're all perfect for if you're on a Mediterranean holiday and wandering around little piazzas and the beautiful cypress trees and things you get in, in that part of... Um, southern italy absolutely fantastic just looking over this i mean you were there wonderful song very melancholic and laden with memory and i always find that really moving and, and of course the garden itself that majestic huge synthesizer sound but you know anybody can do a huge synthesizer sound and john obviously is a master of that but it was the little telling acoustic details that always made the difference for me with this album um and you know for me, this was fantastic stuff. I just absolutely love this record and it's so good to have it on green vinyl again. I've got to take another look. I'm going to stop the camera in a moment so I can um, get a poly lined in or on this gate vault. It's expected to be a, a single sleeve, but look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that lovely? Really, really, really nice. Beautiful. So it's great to have this on vinyl again because it's been a long, long time and I'm hoping at some point there'll be a reissue of the golden section on vinyl. Hint, hint. Um, I still have my original because I absolutely love it. That's my favourite Fox album with its mesh of psychedelia and European romanticism and electronics. And I think it has some of his most moving songs. And I mean, one of the songs I, re I really like on this is, was Pater Noster, which um, I don't know if, if John is a Catholic or whether he had a Catholic upbringing. And I never wanted to ask him personally because I think it's, cause it, it's, it's too personal a thing, but it's that sort of whole churchy feeling. It's really sort of prominent on a lot of his work, obviously Cathedral Oceans, and um, it's just great stuff. <laughs>
So let's have a look. I'm just going to get this into the um, into the PVC. I use these really heavy PVC covers. Again from Covers 33, um, who you know they must be ready to deal with me by now, surely. Uh, but I, you know, I, it's not because I want to sort of mark them. I just think this stuff's really good, and the customer service is good. Um, prices are good, and you get the real you get the real thing. Now, popping one of these into a, a, a gate for PVC is always a dodgy moment. So bear with me, um, but. Yes, yeah, so it was great to see John yesterday. Um, I did talk to him about a year ago about, you know, if we'd see a tour again. Obviously, that was in the height of the pandemic, which is sadly still with us. Um, and he said, you know, touring is, is difficult, you know, and um, and it is a real problem. But um, it would be lovely to see him again. And um, I, I've i never seen him actually play with Robin Simon. I missed the maths gigs, which is a real shame. So there you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Um, and that's out there now for you to get from Tans, and it's lovely to see that back. So hopefully we'll see a reissue of um, the Golden Section soon. So just to reflect a bit more on the album, um, I think for me, this was very much the way I wanted to go myself, musically and aesthetically at the time. I think there's interesting links between Fox and, and science fiction, particularly the work of J.G. Ballard, um, the whole thing about overgrown cities, which we tend to relate to the drowned world. But it also really relates to the sort of founding text of the English disaster novel, which is Richard Jeffrey's um, After London, Wild England is the subtitle, in which the sort of country becomes overgrown. It's very beautiful. So, you know, there is that as well, which is a very sort of deep Englishness in, in John's work, which, which I really find incredibly appealing. And I'm just looking now, thinking about Dancing Like Again, another great track, great single. It was wonderful lyrics about waltzing with Oppenheimer in the crowded streets of, of Chroma Key, which of course is a photography and pictorial term. And of course we tend to, when I first heard it, I thought Chroma Key, that sounds like somewhere in the Republic of Ireland, like um, Connemara, something like that. It's got a very romantic feel to it and a surrealism in it and all those references to modernism and, 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 and futurism, which has always been throughout Fox's work. But it's the way that melds with the pastoral thing that makes him really special to me. So that's the garden. Um, lovely. I um, hope you'll get out there and get one for yourself and enjoy. If you've never heard it, it's a fantastic record. A sideways step back to Systems of Romance and a wonderful bridge to what for me was his best album, The Golden Section. Um, so yeah, so John's out there making new music. We can still buy his records and wonderful back catalog. Of course, there's the book which came out last year and he's, you know, I've got Fox the dotted around the house everywhere because there's so much of it, which is nice to have. Nice to see an artist at his time of life still making work and still making excellent work um not just a lot of it but generally most of it is truly excellent this is outlaw bookseller signing off have a great day get online or to your local record shop and get a copy of the garden now is my advice for today thanks a lot <laughs>